guys, welcome back to another live session. Uh, it's been a fortnight since our last one and we had a poll up last time for what you guys would like to see between the, um, the floral font flower tutorial and the live stream for the uh, cake in real time. So since it was a, almost a tie, I am actually going to do the cake in real time now for you. So I'll get started. Because this will be up on my YouTube channel, I'll get started now, people will start coming through. So if you guys are already here, hello. Uh, but basically I have my buttercream ready and I've tinted it teal with some America La Jal food colour. And what I'm going to do is give it a quick stir, just to make sure it's nice and um, soft and easy and pliable to work with. I'm going to pop some onto my cake board. This is an 8 inch cake board that I've used. And popping some on here to stick my cake on top. We're using a 5 inch cake today. Just popping that right in the center and pressing down firmly. I'm going to take off the scarf if it's actually really warm here. And then with the same frosting, I'm going to just fill in my cake. Just like so. If you guys have any questions at any point, please do write them down. I have my awesome man here with me today, Peter from GMA Fitness Academy. Check out his channel, he has a channel as well, it's pretty cool. <laughs> and um, he'll be as a kind of calling out your questions for you. So that way I can yeah, answer as we go. So you're basically just doing the same thing every time. There's only about maybe a tablespoon or so worth of frosting on this. As I'm building this, I think I'm realizing this is actually a four inch cake, not a five inch. And I'm alternating with the chocolate mud and a uh, orange and poppy seed flavored cake as well. I don't have orange and poppy seed up on my channel just yet, but if you do want to make it, I do have a vanilla cake butter cake recipe. And I basically use that as a base for all my flavors anyway. So you would just have to add some orange zest and poppy seeds into that. Okay, Star says, how do you make your frosting? Uh, so this frosting is half buttercream and half vegetable shortening with icing sugar. Uh, I usually use the standing mixer and with the paddle attachment to make that, so that's just... <laughs> but I do have a tutorial up on YouTube as well on um, how to make this from start to finish. Uh, you'll want to search up hybrid buttercream for this particular recipe. And it's really nice because it's really pale and very creamy and easy to work with. So I recommend using this one for projects. Now on to our crumb coat. So I am using the same frosting for this. And the crumb coat is just a thin layer of frosting that goes around the cake to trap in any crumbs, traps in moisture as well, and kind of uh, creates a protective layer for your cake. Uh, to kind of guide, uh, cover it against the environment sort of thing. So Daniel Bez wants to know what kind of uh, pans you use because they are deep and he likes those. Uh, these ones here are by Cecil & Co. I think it's an Australian brand and um, they're about three to four inches in height. Whenever I bake my cakes I fill it about three quarters of the way, the cake tin, and I always cover my cake tins in aluminium foil. Um, as they're baking and that way the cake rises a lot more evenly and because it rises evenly you don't have to take off a lot from the top so your cake remains nice and tall. And now going with my bench scraper, uh, this is an acrylic scraper. I make these in here myself but I sell them online. Um, if you guys need one I can leave a link in the description box below. But basically, I'm just going around the cake to smooth down the frosting. And Alzina asked how many inches the cakes were. You said they were five? Yeah, uh, these cakes, I thought they were five inches, but the more I look at them, they look like four inch cakes to me right now. Uh, but about four to five inches is what you'll uh, kind of see there. You know what? I'm actually going to see exactly what size it is. Yes, sir. cake tin that I used, so Cecil and & Co. And this cake is a 5 inch cake that I'm working with. Sorry, for some reason I just couldn't tell. So, so 
now I'm going to take off that lip of frosting. In my videos, this whole process probably goes for about a minute, but in real life, it probably takes a good 15 minutes of your time. And just bringing that lip of frosting to the centre, and then you want to pop this into your fridge to set completely. That way your cake layers don't move around while you're creating that final layer of frosting. Now, because I don't have one in the fridge, I'm actually going to go ahead and decorate on top of this, but for you guys, pop this in the fridge, let it rest first, and then bring it back out, and we'll do the final layout now. So, still going with the same coloured frosting. And I stir it just to make it soft again, so it's easy to work with. Now I'll start at the top, and just flatten that out. And a Beta95 asks, is this the whole cake, or will it be topped? Uh, this is halfway, so we're going to do the, um, the striped buttercream method. And then I do have some decorations to put on top uh, as well, some gold and pearls and whatnot. <laughs> and now this layer of frosting is thicker than what we did before. So the same colour again. Nita asks, how do you cover with aluminium? How do I cover with aluminium? So, so I'm uh, guessing it's the cake pans that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So once I put the batter in, I... <laughs> it's a really old cake. Once I put the batter in, I literally just go over like this. And then I'll, ooh, I'll squeeze and then press up towards the rim. And that just holds it closed. And then I'll pop it in the oven like that and it'll um, cook nice and evenly. Jocelyn Diaz asks, uh, she's making an ice cream cake for her birthday tomorrow. Do you recommend putting a layer of ganache on the cake before you put the ice cream on top or no? Uh, a layer on the cake? So it's um, cake on the a layer inside. of ganache on the cake before putting the ice cream on top or no? Before putting the ice cream on top? Sorry. I'm not... Ice cream cake. Okay. Uh, ganache on ice cream cake? I probably. Oh, so I'm understanding the question. So you've got uh, the ice cream cake you prepared, and then you're popping ganache over the top. Is that? Uh, so I'll read the question again. Do you recommend putting a layer of ganache on the cake layer before I put the ice cream on top, or no? Okay. Um, if you're using a regular cake, then I. Yeah, you could, you could definitely do it that way, but you'd make sure that your ganache is set though before you add any ice cream on top, because ganache will be warm. Uh, but once it's set, it's nice and hard. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I got that right. And now we're just going to clear up the outside a little. And you don't have to be too pedantic with this section, because we are going to go over it with our frosting comb. And uh, yep. I hope I get this name right. Uh, Nika Green asks, how do you toughen your buttercream if it's too soft? Uh, adding icing sugar helps. And if you're scared that it's going to be too sweet, uh, what I like to do is with the paddle attachment, let it run on a high speed, like a high, medium high, that speed three or so, and let that buttercream really beat, and it will really uh, dense up and become nice and thick. The only problem with that is that you'll want to work with it pretty quickly because there's a lot of air that's suddenly been incorporated in your buttercream. And is this American buttercream? Uh, this is American buttercream, but it's half shortening and half butter, so it's the hybrid version. Uh, so this is the frosting comb that I like to use. It's a square one. I always use the smaller side. This is more for like um, when you're doing a, a cake thing to maybe sports or sporting things. And I'm going to go around now and really indent those teeth. So I am adding a fair bit of pressure, but not enough to make my cake go sliding. And I'll just keep going around until it's pretty neat. 
D. Garland asks, how do you keep your buttercream from melting while coating your cake? It would have to do with the consistency of your buttercream. If your buttercream is melting at room temperature, then I think your climate's probably a little bit too warm. Um, and you'll want to go with maybe a ganache instead. But if your buttercream is melting while it's going on your cake, then it could be the recipe there's not enough icing sugar in there, or yeah, it's too warm in your home, potentially. So maybe pop on the aircon if you can. And now some yellow buttercream. Filling in the spaces in between. And every time I stop the turntable, I stop the pressure on the bag. Okay, Sarah DG asks, when I make my Swiss uh, meringue buttercream, it always comes out a bit on the yellow side. What icing should I use to make a cake if I want it to be very white? For the palest um, frosting, you'll want to go with an all shortening based buttercream. So you use the same recipe for the American buttercream, but you don't actually add butter because yellow uh, butter has that yellowish tinge. Adding purely just vegetable shortening will give you the best results. Only problem is that it is going to taste a little bit on the oily side. Um, so maybe just add a little extra icing sugar and definitely do not hold back on the flavoring. I would add a lot of clear lemon ex uh, essence if you can. Mm -hmm. yeah, the all shortening base buttercream is really, really good for that sort of um, white frosting effect. Abita95 asks, what is the difference in taste from your hybrid buttercream and the regular buttercream? If you're doing half butter, half shortening, you honestly can't really taste the difference. It's more the texture, it's a lot creamier and a lot softer. Um, but aside from that, there's no real flavor difference for those two. And just kind of quickly give us a quick wash. And then we'll go in and we'll fix up the size of the cake. Use the breakfast dishes. <laughs> uh, D. Garland asked, do you use washable or disposable piping bags? Uh, these ones here are disposable. They come on a roll. So usually they come on a pack of about 72 or 100. And I buy this from Pack and Save in Telemarine. Uh, but they are available online as well. It's just a lot easier than having to wash out your bags. So. Now to create that swiped, uh, striped effect, I'm just going to gently peel back that yellow layer of frosting. And every time I go in again, I always make sure to take that excess off and head back in with a clean surface on my scraper. And the more you go over it, the clearer and neater those stripes will be. Isn't that good having a cameraman, guys? <laughs> and a um, big thank you to Peter for being with us today. <laughs> uh, Irma Rios asks, I'm making a wedding, wedding cake. I live in Florida. Buttercream with butter only or shortening only so it will hold all day? Uh, if it's going to be warm, I would uh, recommend going with the shortening based buttercream. Um, you can still use the old butter, but still add shortening in there if you don't want it to be completely all um, vegetable shortening. It just holds a lot better. And Jessica de Leon asks, can I keep the fun covered cake in the fridge? I, I do, to be honest. It does create that... Um, that layer of sweat over the cake, but at room temperature, depending on the climate, it will dissipate. Within half an hour, you'll have a dry cake again. It's a bit of a taboo topic, not taboo. It's um, a lot of people say yes, a lot of people say no. Me, personally, I just put it in the fridge. If you don't want that uh, sweat to happen on the cake, what you can do is pop your cake in a cake box, make sure that the lid fits on it perfectly, or if you can fit in an airtight box, even better. But if you have a cake box, take down the lid and that way no moisture can get in it's pretty airtight 
and your cake won't sweat. The condensation will settle on the box and not on the cake. So there's a cheating way to get around that. So we're just gonna clear up that top lip, bring it to the center. Kenya Estrada asks, uh, she says, hello, I love your cake. How do you secure the cake for stacked construction? Uh, with dowels is usually um, the way to go. You could use the wooden dowels or the bubble tea straws. I buy mine from like a $2 shop, so they're pretty easy to come by. Uh, if you're doing really tall cakes, then you will want to center down. And I've actually got a tutorial coming up soon in a couple of weeks on how to construct a really tall cake with the center down. So that'll be up on my channel very soon. And Managan, I think I can answer this one. She, she asks, who eats the cakes when you end shoot every time? Uh, we all have to eat the cakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, my family's really sick of cake because I make it so often. Uh, so if I can, I'll try to use fake cakes. But this one here, for example, Probably no one's going to eat it. It'll stay in the fridge uh, until it has to be thrown out because I, I'm a hoarder. Um, if I, yeah, until it's completely moldy, and I, okay, it's not completely moldy, but until I know it's no longer safe to eat, that's why I'll throw it out. But it'll literally just stay in the fridge uneaten and it hurts. It really hurts. And in Australia, you're, um, you're not actually allowed to take it to, like, for example, detention centres or uh, resting homes or like, all that is because the ingredients could be uh, hypoallergenic to somebody or they just don't accept it so I can't even give it away to organizations um, Shalma Rumi asks what are the ingredients you use for the buttercream so there is shortening unsalted butter icing sugar uh, and some vanilla essence I do have the recipe on my channel and I'll link it at the bottom of this video and also in the video the little eye that comes on um, comes down from the sides so we've finished the sides of the cake and now I'm just adding on the decorations and these are uh, Maltesers that I've used and they've been coated in <coughs> champagne gold which is by creative cake decorating uh, Abita95 asks where do you get the cake scraper the scraper, I sell these and I make them myself uh, and I sell them online. They come in a few different sizes. This is the biggest one I have, 26 centimeters. So I'll link in the description box uh, where you can buy that one. So yeah, that is the cake for today. So a bit of gold, a bit of teal and a bit of yellow. The pastels work really, really nicely with the gold. And again, that was a five inch cake, two cakes stacked to make a five inch tall um, cake as well. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. If there's any more questions, please do shoot them through and um, I can do my best to answer any videos you might have. Yeah. Uh, before I do, I might quickly note, this is going to be the last live stream I do for a while. Uh, I'll be heading off to a family holiday overseas for about seven weeks and that'll be in about 10 days time so the next live stream will now be in august um but thank you everybody for joining and if you've joined a lot of uh, previous live streams thanks again um but they will be coming back i just want to be doing them for about two months time so yeah. any questions at all from anybody uh, yeah, there's a few here, and apologies if I miss some, there's a few coming through, so I might miss a few coming through. Um, if you had to move that cake on another layer, how would you move it? Asks Cami Wires. So, this one here, uh, definitely uh, pop your cake into the freezer if you can for about 15 minutes. That icing will get nice and hard, and so when you take a uh, spatula and you remove it from the cake board and lift it, it won't shift your buttercream or indent it, and it's safe to move to another. Uh, where do you buy your cake boards by Elizabeth Fung? Uh, I buy mine from a shop called uh, oh, Australian Flower Power. Uh, you need to have an ABN to be able to buy from there because I buy it in bulk. But you can buy these from your craft stores like Spotlight, 
uh, Lincraft coals and bulwarks actually sell them as well now, so they're really, really easy to come by. Um, this is an 8 inch one. Uh, we don't, uh, Daniel Bayers asked, do you also sell acrylic round cake boards? But I don't think you sell cake boards. Uh, they're not cake boards, they are acrylic rounds. And you can use them as temporary cake boards as you're building your cake. And then when you're done, you can shift it onto the actual display board. Uh, you could use them as well to create that um, kind of perfect top edge of your cake. That's probably what they're more frequently used for. And these are available on my website as well. Anything acrylic and cake related, I'd probably sell. <laughs> probably take one more if there's one more. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Zul Nasif, I'm sorry if I said your name incorrectly there. I made a cake, but when I was trying to smooth the top, it wasn't working. Why too hard buttercream? Oh, the buttercream. If the buttercream's too hard, you probably, um, if you take your time, creating the layer on the outside of your cake, it'll set a lot faster. So the faster you work with your buttercream, the less chances that it will go really hard on you and it becomes hard to kind of scrape off at the very top. Um, if that does happen though, you could probably use a blowtorch just on the inside, not the outside, but on the inside section to make it a bit soft again. Or you can use your spatula, run it under some very hot water, boiling water, and then go in with that and it'll soften out your buttercream. All right, thanks guys so much for tuning in. This was the live stream for May. Nope, we're in June. This was the first live stream for June. And I will catch you again in August. Bye for now.